we will continue with our discussion on non deterministic finite automata. There is one particular way of thinking of NFAs non deterministic finite automata which is very useful and that is this that you may consider that in a phase have the ability of guessing and then checking. So, the work of an NFA, the way or what it is doing, that is the language it is accepting, it is useful to think in terms of this guess and check methodology. Let me, let me first take a very simple problem and then through that problem, I will try to explain this guess and check paradigm. Consider this language L, this is the set of all strings over 0 1 such that x has a has 0 1 0 as substring. You have seen this uh, or similar problem before and you know how to do it in DFA, but let us see and convince ourselves that how this view of guess and check gives us a very simple NFA for this language. Now, when you are thinking in terms of this guess and check, first of all we consider only the strings in the language. We are not bothered with the strings which are not in the language. Right? So, what is a property of all strings which are in the language? So, such a string may be anything, but there will be some somewhere this substring will occur and then there may be another part non empty part following this 0 1 0. So, imagine an automaton which is looking at the input bit by bit, then it guesses when the 0, this 0 of the interesting substring 0 1 0 comes in the input. Okay. So, in put let us take a particular example, let us say we had 1 1 0 1, then we had 0 0, then we had 0 1 0 and 1 0 1 1, this is the string. To make it a little more interesting, this same problem, let me make the occurrence of 0 1 0 as the first occurrence of 0 1 0 here. So, as you can see in this string 0 1 0 is occurring. So, therefore, this particular string is in the language. Now, imagine an automaton m and this is the input which is given to this automaton. It is it sees this first one, then it then it sees second one, then it sees 0. Now, as I said it has the ability to guess of these zeros, which is the 0, which is of interest and that you can see is it is in this 0. So, in a way what this automaton does it will wait it will keep on skipping these symbols one after another, guess which is the 0 of the substring 0 1 0 in the language in the string. right? 
So, that is this 0. Then it needs to verify that starting from here, there is indeed a substring 0 1 0 starts. So, let us that is the checking part. So, how does an automaton check that 0 1 0 this just this substring 0 1 0. So, it requires these states this is in the state in it is in some state and then it sees this 0 it comes to this sees this 1 sees this 0. So, the point I am trying to make is this that it is like the DFA right. What we said in this state it remembers that I have seen the first 0 here it remembers I have seen I have seen 0 1 and then here it says 0 1 0. But the entire string is of course, more than this. Now, imagine our automaton looks like something like this that there is this transition which in because of which the machine can remain in this state either on input 0 or input 1 and non determinism is coming here first of all that you see on 0 from this state either you can come to this state or one can goes to this state. This guess and check paradigm of understanding non determinism is that the machine guesses which is the 0, where which is the first first or which is the 0 at which the substring 0 1 0 in the string is starting. So, let us say it makes this case here and now the automaton has the requirement of verifying that it is indeed the 0 of 0 1 0. So, then it 0 then 1 then 0 it is in this state and now after that once it has verified that 0 1 0 is there then of course, in this part of the string comes or you know in this particular concrete example 1 0 1 1 come this sub, sub string comes. So, here it should remain irrespective of whatever is the input bit and if the machine can come by here, then we should say the string is accepted. Right. Now, in particular notice the verification means that after 0 if another 0 came, then the verification fails. And in case of NFA, what does it mean? This is here and now a 0 came. What would happen? Then of course, the no transition is defined. So, that particular computation path is aborted. So, but before proceeding, let me again say in this very simple automaton an example of an NFA, how that guess and check paradigm, how the guess and check methodology is being brought into play. Whatever be the input, the machine is trying to guess in the initial state, where is the first 0 of 0 1 0. Now, it guesses and this is what you have to always assume that the machine will guess correctly. What happens if it does not guess correctly? I will come to that a little later, but let us say it guesses correctly, but that is not enough it should now verify that it is indeed the first 0 of 0 1 0. So, that it does by doing making these transitions and at this point machine has verified it had guessed and that it has that this is the right 0 and then when it comes here it has checked that its guess is correct and once it is convinced that it is that is the machine's guess check is correct, the machine is convinced that his guess was correct, then it has no hesitation in accepting the string. Okay. So, this is it, this is L 
this is the language accepted by this machine, which accepts this particular language L. Okay. Now, sometimes this question asks what happens if the machine guesses wrongly. Now, suppose the machine guessed that this is the 0 of 0 1 0, then what would happen? Of course, it will. So, on 1 it remains here, on the second one it remains here. Now, it guesses that this is the 0 and now it will try to verify the next 3 bits are 0 1 0. It sees 0, fine. So, it comes here, it sees 1, it will come here. Now, instead of a 0 which it is expecting, it sees a 1, this one, then computation aborts. So, a wrong guess on the part of an FA will mean a computation path either which is aborted or which leads to non acceptance. Correct guess and if the string is in the language would mean that the input will be accepted and the machine will be in the accepting state or final state. Okay. So, in the same way we can think of the other language. So, in fact, in fact, now you see it is so simple to say that is the example we had given earlier, similar example that the language x has 0 1 0 as a as substring or 1 1 as a substring. So, I can just say or 1 1 as a substring. Then there are two things the machine guesses given a string in the language. Firstly, is the string in the language because 0 1 0 there or is it because the substring 1 1 is there in the language. right? So, if it, so you remember that in that case the NFA would look like this. So, now you see on both 0 and 1 from this state it can make it, it has two transitions defined on both either 0 or 1. Now, so let us say I have again this string. This is of course, in the language for both because 0 1 0 is there, 1 1 is there, but let us say the machine guesses that first that I will accept the string because 1 1 is there and then it skips the 1, it remains here, it 1, it remains here, it 0. Now, it you know it has already guessed and now it verifies that 1 1 is here. So, on the first one of 1 1 it will come here, second one it comes here. So, therefore, on these two ones convinces the machine that the substring 1 1 indeed occurs in the language and therefore, whatever comes later it will remain in this state. right? So, this is the same thing. So, it is so easy you see that in thinking in terms of guess and check this method to repeat myself again that NFA as if to accept a string it is guessing where the property which that makes uh, the string in the language where is in the that property is to be found in the string and then it is verifying it is checking that indeed that property is being obeyed by the string and after that it remains it is in the final state. The other example of NFA that we had seen. So, let us say something similar so, we had seen something another language like this let me call it L 1 is x in 0 1 star right. Now, let me say the why not let us say the tenth bit from the right end is 1. And then suppose an input is comes 
something like this uh, we will we'll make the tenth bit 1 here. So, I will first write the tenth bit 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 And this suppose this is the end and then I have something 0 1 0 1 1. Supposing this is the input and this should be there in the language L 1 clearly, because 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 tenth bit from the right end is 1. Now, suppose I want to design an NFA to accept this language you have already seen what the NFA should be, but I am thinking in now in terms of this guess and check. So, what should be the guess? The guess should be that this is the tenth bit and verification should be consisting of two things that this tenth bit is 1 and after that there are exactly 9 bits, no more, no less. So, so what? So, let us see the machine is initially in a state and on 0 and 1 it remains here and then when the tenth bit comes, which is from the right end, the tenth bit, tenth bit from the right end. That time, Now, it should verify that this is indeed the tenth bit. So, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8th bit will lead me here, ninth bit here and tenth bit. So, you see, so let me let me complete this. Do you care what is the ninth bit from the right end is? You do not. So, for verification should mean that tenth bit from the right end is 1 and after that there are exactly 9 more bits. So, thus this either on 0 or 1 it will go here, here either on 0 or 1, 0 or 1, 0 or 1, 0 or 1. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 or 1, 0 or 1 and tenth bit comes here takes me here and now, how do I verify this is indeed the, there are no more bits after this by having no transition out of it. So, if the by this you started from here and then let us say whatever the, uh, there are 9 exactly 9 other bits one comes here. And then, if there are more bits, then what happens? Then the NFA computation is not defined, therefore, the next state is not defined. The that string or the guess where the tenth bit is not 1, but let us say twelfth bit from the right end is 1, then there will be 2 extra bits. So, at you are here and you will find one more input bit has come and then the NFA's computation from here by by defining no transition out of this state. I am ensuring that if this is not the tenth bit from the right end, the string is not going to lead me lead the NFA to the accepting state this final state. So, point I am trying to make is there are two aspects guess and check. You see there are many ones coming before this, but the tenth bit from the right end was this right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The 1 came 
the machine guessed correctly, let us say that this is not the one which is the tenth bit from the right, this is this one is also not, this one is also not. When this one, so all up, all up to this point, up to this point, the machine remained in this initial state, and when the tenth bit, I mean tenth bit from the right end came, it guessed correctly. That's how you should imagine that it guessed correctly, and then now it is verifying it is indeed the tenth bit from the right. Okay. So these are two examples that we had seen, and I've tried to explain by means of this guess and check methodology. And this is actually how you should, if you think that way, think the design of an NFA becomes quite simple in many cases. Let us take a new example and that example will be as following. Our next example for NFA, where I would like to again explain, exemplify this guess and check methodology is this. Uh, suppose L is regular and now I am defining another language using this L as follows. We are saying that L 1 and, and, and without loss of generality let me say and L is a subset of 0 1 star. So, that means, L consists of binary string and L 1 is all y in 0 1 star. So, again of course, binary strings such that there is and x in L, you see that is how I am using this L to define this new language L 1. There is an there is an x in L from which or let us say which is flipped or one bit of which is flipped, there is an x in L, one bit of which is flipped to obtain this y. Okay. So, let us let us see it clearly. So, you are saying L 1 is that language, where this is these language consists of binary strings and if you take a string in L 1, you will find an x in L and such that if you flip one particular bit of this x, that bit may be anywhere in x and exactly one bit. So, let me let me emphasize this one by saying that this, this is exactly one bit of which is flipped to obtain this particular string y. So, let, let me let me make this clear. Supposing my language was like this 0 1 1 0 1. So, what is L 1? Now, you see take this string 0 1, you flip ex this bit, so you will get the string 1 1. Now, this 1 1 should be in L 1, because I have obtained 1 1 by flipping this bit of 0. So, similarly I could have flipped this bit also, so I then I would have get gotten this string 0 0. Right? So, from 0 1 I, by flipping one bit, I would get these two strings 1 0 1 
if I flip the first bit, I will get 0, 0, 1. If I get flip the second bit, I will get 1, 1, 1. If I flip the last bit, I will get 1, 0, 0. So, therefore, my language L1 is 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1 and 1, 0. Now, if I ask you, uh, tell me why this bit is in this language L1, you will say, oh, you see, if you flip, I have asked you why this, this particular string is language what, L1, you will say, oh, you see, that is because you flip this bit, the second bit, you will get 101 1, and that is in the language L, right. It is clear what the language L1 is and the problem is to show show that L1 is regular. Now, before we try to design so and uh, see basically what we are trying to do will be that we will design an NFA for L1, but I have not yet shown you that this will make L1 to be regular, but let me just say show that L1 is accepted by an NFA. At this point, this should be the more appropriate question. And later on, we will see the set of languages accepted by NFAs, it's precisely the set of languages accepted by DFA. So, once we know that, then I could have invoked that to, shape, to, to claim, once I show that L1 is accepted by an NFA, that L1 is also regular. But at this point, let us restrict ourselves to only prove that there is an NFA to accept L1. Okay. So, let me now remove this and once one when you are confronted with this problem, of course, one thing you know, one thing is that since L is regular, there is a DFA M. So, I can write like this as L is regular, there is a DFA m to accept it. Of course, that comes by definition of regularity. And now, I want to design an NFA. Right? So, my NFA, let us say, so let me first of all say this m has these states q and then of course, its alphabet is 0, 1, binary alphabet we are using and its transition function is defined by delta q 0 and f. This is sum n. Now, I would like to define to define m 1 and n f a such that language accepted by M 1 is precisely the language L 1, which we have defined here. Right. So, let us think in terms of this guess and check business. Remember, for, for, for designing that NFA, all I am interested in is that if you give me any string of the language, my NFA will be able to accept it and will think of the work of the NFA in terms of that guess and check. All right. So, you have given me a y and this y happens to be in L 1, right. This is a bit string. Now, 
what should the NFA do? Guess and check. So, NFA has to guess which bit is the bit which was flipped from a string of L in order to get this particular string Y. So, let us say, let us just think conceptually first that this is the bit that was flipped. the bit that is somewhere that is here, but that is not enough. It is not saying that I have guessed and therefore, this, but you need to verify that this fact. What is that you need to verify? There is an x in L who, whose one bit flip, exactly one bit flip gives me the string that you have given me as input. Suppose you just think in this way that suppose there, there was a 0 here and by flipping I will get a 1 here. So, everything else remains same. What can you say about this string? New string. So, this bit was 0 here, you have flipped this 1, rest of the bits are exactly identical and now if this string is in the language L 1 then clearly this string should be in the, this is the x which is in L. How do you verify that this string is in language L? The DFA obviously should accept it, right. So, now we are getting a glimmer of what is to be done. So, imagine a machine NFA which on successive bits behaves as if it is the DFA M. On one exactly one particular input bit, it flips the bit. So, it was 0 here and it assumes as if the bit is 1 and then sees what the DFA would have done on this particular bit that is the state now the machine goes to, machine in the sense the DFA goes to, this M goes to, our NFA is keeping track of that and then rest of the bits it behaves exactly like the machine M, the DFA. Okay. So, let me repeat, to verify that Y is in L 1, what our NFA will do in the beginning, it will keep track of the states the machine the DFA is in on successive bits. Then on one particular bit, if it is 0, it will make the transition as if or it will it will it will see which is the state the DFA would go to had this bit been instead of 0 1 and then from that state onwards, it just keeps track of what the DFA would do till the rest of the input and then at this point the NFA check will be over if the DFA is found to be in an accepting state. So, let me describe this picture here. Imagine this is a DFA, this is the DFA M and this is the initial state and there may be a number of final states. Let us just see for the sake of this example, <coughs> illustration rather that there are two final states. Imagine we are thinking of a machine. NFA which is consisting of two copies of this. So, this is so two copies of course, look like this. <coughs> Excuse me and then imagine this is one of the states, so there are many other states, but let me focus on one particular state and for the sake of illustration, let us say on this is a DFA remember 
one zero it goes here and one on one it comes here. Of course, in the copy also, so let me even give give names for this P Q R. So, as I was saying that this is one particular state and on 0 this d f a m would go to q on 1 it goes to r on the copy also of course, the similar same thing will happen identical thing this state p this state q this state r right 0 and then 1. And now, imagine my n f a is making use of these two copies. So, initially remember up to this point it is behaving exactly like the d f a. So, it imagine at that time this is making use of this copy and suppose it sees now a 0 and the machine has guessed the n f a has guessed that this is the 0 which was flipped right to a from a string which was in L. So, actually d f a would have seen 1. So, suppose so therefore, the n f a on 0 also it can of course, go here it also on 0 can go to this state r the state r. Okay. Now, just just look at this what I am trying to say is this that normally when the d f a is working of course, on from the state p on 0 you go to q on p if you on 0 if you go to r that means, what another way of looking at it is that as if the bit 0 was flipped and because of that when we flip 0 we would see 1 and the d f a therefore, should go to the state r. Okay. So, similarly from this state p on 1 see normally on 1 it would go to r, but if that particular bit 1 is the bit which was flipped then it on 1 it should go to as if it had seen a 0 the d f a would have seen a 0 and it would have gone to this q instead. Now, uh, then after that the machine remains here. Okay. So, now of course, this is a, so let me complete at least the picture wise pictorially what the n f a looks will be this is the initial state initial state is the initial state of the first copy from every state of the first copy these kinds of these new transitions are defined. So, either on 0 the it can make a transition to its copy that will be the normal d f a working or what can be done is to imagine that that 0 is flipped and then what happens then it would go to the copy here which the d f a would have gone from here on seeing a 1. So, that is why you are coming and then these are no longer these are which were the final states here are not final states of the n f a, but these two the final states of the d f a in the second copy are the final states of the n f a. Now, through this picture let me explain that guess and check the way it is happening the n f a starts its operation on this copy of d f a. By the way why it is an n f a? Because you see on on every state on every symbol in this copy in this part of the state space of n f a. By the way the n f a states will be the this 
set of these states plus the set of these states. So, either on 0 it can come here or on 0 it can come here and so there, therefore, it is an NFA because and not a DFA because on 0 it has 2 transitions from here and similarly from 1, 2 transitions from here and that is the case for every state. I have just shown you the case with one particular state, but that is precisely what you will do for every write it more formally here later on, but let us understand the guess and check idea from here. The machine NFA is working on the string, it sees successive inputs, it remains in this copy till it finds the bit which it guesses uh, had it been flipped then the along with the flipped bit the string would have been accepted by DFA. So, it considers the effect of that flip comes to this copy and then again behaves like the DFA. So, it is doing two things that you see to go from here to one of the final states on an input what is going to happen you may be here somewhere and then at some point you have to come to this part because the fi accepting states final states of the entire machine is so this m1 is this entire thing right the initial state is this and the final states accepting states are these two so you can see we are verifying that ex exactly one flip of the input. If it whether or not it would take the DFA from the initial state to one of the finals, it is one of its final states. How am I making sure that exactly one flip? You see, you can the NFA has the ability to consider flipping any bit, but after flipping the effect of flipping it the, the work happens in this copy and then no more flips can be entertained. So, exactly one one and exactly one flip is required to go from here to here all right. So, let me let me more formally define this NFA m 1. So, as I said that m is this. So, what should be the states of m 1? So, let me say m 1 is q 1 0 1 delta 1 q 0 1 f 1 right. So, I would think of the way I have done it in this picture that q 1 is there are two things whether I what we need to remember is whether I am in this copy of DFA or in this copy of DFA and so therefore, let me see. So, q 1 you can see it has exactly twice the number of states of q, because if for every state q I have two states q 0 and q 1 and I would like to imagine q 0 are these states the first copy and q 1 are this. So, how do I describe delta 1? So, delta 1 now first let me describe suppose remember a transition function takes two things an input symbol and a state of the machine here suppose del the state is q 0 
and I have a 0. Now, the machine can remain in this copy. So, that would mean essentially saying that it can remain in state delta of q and then this 0 has come. Remember, this q is the state of the DFA, 0 is the input symbol which is come. So, from q the DFA would go to delta q 0 and it is still in the first copy. So, that to indicate that I mean it is 0 and this is one state, but it can go to another state also and which is that it considers this 0 as 1 and that would mean delta of q 1 and now it should be in this copy that I indicate by 1. Okay. All right. Is this clear? So, once more states of machine M 1 which is an NFA, they keep track of two things. What is the state of DFA and what whether it is using the first copy of DFA or the second copy of DFA. So, here it is that is why states are q 0 means it is in the top copy, q 1 means it is the q of the second copy. Right? This is the set of states for q for m 1 the NFA and so let me state very clearly and this is NFA and of course, the transition function tells me that it is an NFA because from this state on this symbol there are two ways of going. Right? Similarly, what is delta 1 of q 1 sorry q 0 on 1 right it is. Now, you can see if it if the NFA chooses to remain in the first copy then it is just this that this is delta from on q it has seen a 1. So, it is 1 please do not get confused between this delta 1 and this delta. Now, you are talking of the DFA q on 1 q on 1 this is the state and it has it is going to this state that means, it is assuming that it is still in the first copy. So, therefore, it is 0, but it can also take this one to be the flip bit right in that case the state would be delta of q 1 has come flip it which is 0 q 0 right, but now it is in the second copy. So, draw it clearly and this is 1. Okay. Right. Now, the role of the picture is over since we are thinking in terms of doing it explicitly writing out explicitly. So, what can you say about delta 1 of q 1 0. Now, it is q 1 means we are talking of the second copy. So, it should be delta of q 0 and it will remain in the second copy. Right? Since it is an NFA we will write like this as a subset of states. 
remember that this whole thing is a state of the NFA and similarly delta 1 of q 1 1 is delta of from q it has seen 1 to q 1 and since it is in the second copy it will remain in the second And other two things. So, for the NFA, I have said Q1, what is 0, 1, what is delta 1, Q0 will be what? Now, you can see Q0 is going to be the state, it is the Q0 of the DFA and the first copy. So, this state is to be taken as, so in fact, let me write it this way that it is. Q 0 0. This is the state and F 1 which are the states? All those states which are ending with second component is 1 and the state component of the DFA is a final state. Right? But the main point of this example was that guess and check methodology. This NFA has the ability, I mean it is using its ability of guessing which is the bit which is flipped. See, every time it will, it can guess, oh, this is in that picture, if you went back to the picture which I had just rubbed out, that for every input bit it is seeing, it has the choice of guessing whether it is the bit which it should consider flipped and then see what the DFA would do. And then it is verifying also that one bit is flipped, exactly one bit is flipped and on this flipped one bit, the new string will take the machine, the DFA from an initial state to one of, from the initial state to one of its final states. So, this is a slightly more involved use of our understanding for our understanding of guess and check methodology of uh, describing an FAs and their work and this is one way and a very useful way. Whenever non-determinism is there, I mean, we will encounter non-determinism in other kinds of automata, be it Turing machines or be it push down automata, wherever non-determinism is there, it is often, in fact, most often it is very useful to think in terms of this guess and check paradigm.